My name's Kenny Dial, and welcome to Season 2 of the Scuba Diving Podcast. It, this is, this is the, the dirty little secret of the dive industry. Open water classes, you make very, very little money. Or you lose money. Or you lose money. Which is, and if, actually, you know what? I yeah. was just having a conversation with somebody on the way here. They messaged me. True story. <laughs> I will show you after. You always think these are setups. They were saying the reason people aren't doing well after this is because people don't want to pay over a certain amount of money for an open water scuba certification. But I don't think that's the public's fault. I think most of the time people decide to become a certified diver and then they start shopping for classes and then that right. sort of tells them where the price point is. Exactly. So that the industry, so the true. dive shops and the instructors are at fault right. because I think the initial thought was do this as a loss leader. Bring everyone right. in. Maybe we, we break even or lose money, but they'll be so excited they'll go on the other classes they'll go on the trips they'll buy equipment and they'll be part of the community that's the initial thought that's not what happens no and it unfortunately causes something on the other side because what happens is the shop starts realizing okay running a dive shop if you don't have some sort of money coming in from somewhere else is really really difficult do I get too much gear which is gonna sit on the shelf and I'm gonna lose money or not enough gear that someone might as well go buy it online if you're teaching classes and you're teaching open water classes, you say, okay, I've got to teach enough classes that I can actually make money at this. But if I have too many classes and I don't, then I, I, I don't burn out. Full. You get burnout. out. You're overworked yep. and you're, it fills up your calendar. Right. It's hard to find good help that can actually be responsible for other people's lives, especially if it's your business. Yeah. I've been in that seat. Yeah. And, and the problem is when you get to that point, you start going, okay, wait a second. This class that we had that used to be, you know, four days plus two checkout dives, we we made sure we went through everything. We made sure everyone was good to Thorough. go. Thorough. You start cutting corners. You start saying, well, other shops are doing it in you know two weekend days, so we can do it. We can cut it down to three days and, and then two checkout dives, or two days of checkout dives. And then you start going, well, maybe we can do it in two days because we're spending too much on the pool now because we're not making any money on these classes and there's not enough people coming back buying gear. So while it may not have been intentional to start, they kind of hung themselves. And I don't mean individuals, I mean the industry as a whole kind of hung itself by saying, let's make this a lost leader. And I think it actually that definitely definitely brought down the quality of classes and brought down the ability of dive shops to really have an incentive to do a good job as opposed to just shuffling through as many people as quickly as they can. I think the false notion out there, because I've lived this and breathed it, I tried the, the inexpensive group rates. I've experimented with all this as an independent instructor and as a dive shop owner. It doesn't work. You keep thinking if you just get a little bit, if you can just advertise a little more, they just don't know about it yet, that's all. You yeah. keep uh, anything other than actually charging less, even though the numbers are higher, I'm not making more money. And no. I, here's, here's what happens. A group that will come in and pay more money obviously has done their homework and they've said, hey, there's a reason I'm going to pay more money. Maybe it's a longer class or an instructor or shop with higher credentials, whatever it may be that they're saying, hey, this is why our class costs more and they do it. If they're paying more like for a private instructor or for a small group, they are going to get that time, because open water isn't enough time to get somebody hooked on scuba diving. Right. Sometimes they do, yeah. but it, in general, it takes a few more dives. If you ensure that everybody makes it and walks out of there feeling good, guess what? 99, actually it's almost 100%. They come back. They come back, they want more, because now that I'm getting it, hey, I actually feel good about this. I'm not flailing anymore. I'm, but the, when you do the budget classes to try and lure people in as a loss leader, oh, get them in here, they'll have fun, and then it'll work. That formula doesn't work. It has never worked, it does not work. The reason is, is if you do a bigger class, even though it's way cheaper, even if you are filling it with eight, 10, 12 people, almost none of them have a good time. Right. Or they don't feel like loyal to that person. Ah, I got my card, now I'm gonna go off and find somebody I really like. Right. I just wanted the cheap price. Right. So it, yeah. it's never, that formula doesn't work. Yeah. Literally ever. Getting back to what I was saying, it's very, it's very similar to teaching little kids to play a sport, right? When you're teaching a kid to throw a baseball for the first time, the first hundred times they throw a baseball, it's gonna be bad. Like there's just no getting around it. It's gonna be bad. But if you work with them and you get them to actually throw the ball, they're gonna to wanna to come back more because they're like, hey, because they're gonna get it like two or three times and they're gonna go, I understand now. They may not be able to do it perfectly, but they start understanding. They go, oh, okay, I'm learning. It took when a while you, to get there. Right, it took a while to get there. Yeah. If you have a scuba class, where an open water class where you can get them to start being comfortable towards the end of it and actually enjoying it instead of just rushing them through and they go, they may not be proficient at the end of it to the point of, you know, 
a, an advance or a, you know, a master diver or whatever, but they're proficient enough to go, hey, I'm almost there. I need more instruction, but I, I feel like it's attainable. I feel like I can get it. As you can probably tell, I have a big problem with the two-day classes. I don't think it's enough time. I don't think there's enough time in between either for people to let it sink in, to let the learning process happen. And they're not comfortable by the time they get done. And because they're not comfortable, they're like, that wasn't fun. I don't want to do that. And I'll never, I'll never be comfortable, which isn't true. But it's true because they're never going to go back. And so if you can get them comfortable enough that they can actually see the future, they can see, okay, I may not be able to do it as well as he can, but I can at least see how you get there. I just, it's not a matter of knowledge, it's a matter of ability. If you don't get that knowledge and it's just, okay, I know how to clear my mask, I know how to, you know, and this is something we talked about before, the comfort, learning to be comfortable down there, that's really what you're teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that can a, be done in two days. I just don't think it can be If you're teaching a skills checklist, you're like, hey, I can do that in two days. You can. Yeah. But like you said, you're not, a checklist is very different than confirming comfort right. and spending that time that it takes to get comfort. Um, but you know, going back to the budget classes, they don't, they never work as a business model. You never right. see those shops around, or like you said, there's something else that they're making money on. Yeah. But I know the consumers out there going, well, hey, don't say they should charge more for their class. Actually, it's not doing you a service. No, you're wasting money. You're wasting, it's, it, it's, it's about value. If you have a two day class and you spend, let's say $300 for a two day class and you never go diving again. That was a complete and total waste right. of that $300. Exactly. If you spend $600 on a better class and you dive for the rest of your life, that $600 was a really good investment. You're investing in a lifestyle, yeah. not a card. Right. I think that's the where- The card just allows you to go have fun. Right. Like nobody gets certified and goes, I got my card, I'm done and walk away. No, it's I got my card so I can go down to the boat and they will let me rent tanks and they'll let me get on the boat and they'll let me go diving. That's why you have the car. It's not to get the car. The training is how much you get out of that diving or if it yeah. ever takes to begin with, which is really the core of the problem. That's yeah. why most people, they don't, they either don't dive again or they go once or twice a year. If a group budget class, odds are you're not diving a lot or you were lucky enough to already have someone else you knew right. diving. So you went and got your card and went and learned with them. That's yeah. that's typically the only success story I hear from yeah. them. Yeah, or, or someone who just, who got it because they knew they were gonna be diving for the rest of their life. And it, and I when I was a kid, I didn't know better. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't Nor in a budget I class. <laughs> I was in a budget. Man. Most people are not getting it for a specific event. They're getting it because, hey, somebody showed me some pictures of their vacation down in the Bahamas. That looks like a lot of fun. I think I want to get certified to dive, and that's how it usually starts. And if that's what it is, and you go and have a miserable time, I know you don't necessarily agree with this, but this is why I don't think you ought to be doing checkout dives in Rainbow River either. That's just my opinion. All right, Amber said I'm okay to push you in now. No. <laughs> the other thing is the diving doesn't accumulate if you don't do it quick enough. Like if you get certified and you're a little nervous and you go diving again a year later, you're starting all over again. It doesn't build on the last dive. It like, yeah. it goes up and yeah, down. It it's like, goes like down, pumping it's the air thing down. that goes yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Most um, divers do not go beyond open water. You're just not gonna change that. Well, you know what? I think I have to amend that a little bit. Okay. I agree that that's probably true, but I think that's probably true because there are so many of the short classes. So many of the just So it's ram a chicken or the egg situation. It is a chicken and the egg thing. That's yeah, you're right. Would most divers stop at open water if they were investing in themselves? And by right. investing in themselves, paying for that private class, or just a quality class. Do their homework, yeah. don't go just, if you shop for price on scuba diving, you're probably, that's gonna be, the entire thing will be a waste of money. Look for value. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the most expensive class. It doesn't have to be a private class. See how many people are coming back. When you go into the shop, is there a lot of people who were previously in classes coming back and signing up for trips and all that kind of stuff? That's how you know it was a good class. I am rambling. Why? You just, you just, you're just throwing stuff out there so you can keep eating that cookie. That cake cookie yeah. pile that you... It's a lot. <laughs> this is an enormous cookie. Get out of that bad boy. Yeah. No, this will probably make the cut, but we'll have it. You want Just, the rest of this? I can't eat it. No, I'm good. And that hmm? is where the cookie crumbles. That is the dumbest thing you've ever said.
Thanks for listening or watching if you're on one of the supported video platforms. If you want all things Sweetwater, like a signed copy of my children's book, merch like this shirt or the hat, online courses, or if you want to advertise for your dive facility, if you just want to follow us, go to sweetwaterscuba.com. You can follow my TikTok at Kenny underscore dial, K-E-N-N-Y underscore D-Y-A-L. Our Instagram account, Sweetwater underscore scuba. Of course, the Down to 60 channels on all major platforms and everything else we're doing to lift the underwater world. Thanks for being here and let's show the rest of the world the rest of the world.